Welcome to the Lonely Islands, where it's all about isolation all the time. Yeah, you might want to hire a different travel agent next time, but you're stuck with me for now. So get ready for this tour de isolation. Reproductive isolation, that is. Let's start over here with this happy family. See, it's not all bad news. These lovebird quailians and their baby represent a species, which is the largest group of organisms that's able to reproduce and generate fertile offspring. Even if organisms don't actually encounter each other in nature to reproduce, if they potentially could reproduce, say they were put in the same enclosure at the zoo, then they're still one species. Actually, that was it for good news. On the other hand, or should I say wing, reproductive isolation is the process by which populations lose gene flow and become unable to reproduce or generate fertile offspring. Just like this poor bobo bird on Isolation Key. Talk about a jailbird. She's definitely not going to find a mate in there. There are two categories of reproductive isolation. Prezygotic isolation, which happens on the left of zygote aisle, and postzygotic isolation, which happens on the right of zygote aisle. We'll clear up the difference between these two soon. When two populations achieve complete reproductive isolation, that is, they cannot ever interbreed, then they're considered to have undergone speciation. Speciation is the formation of a new species from an existing lineage. A key precursor to speciation is a lack of gene flow between groups, which allows genetic differences, and often phenotypic differences, to accumulate between the species. You might have guessed that the Qualian family and the jailbird are different species just by looking at their traits, but now that we see that they're fully reproductively isolated, we know for sure that they're separate species. Now, in nature, there aren't actually many solitary confinement centers for organisms. So how else might reproductive isolation occur? To start, let's head to the west of Zygote Isle and see what's going on with prezygotic isolation. Prezygotic isolation occurs when two populations of organisms are unable to successfully mate and undergo fertilization. Just as the name suggests, prezygotic isolation happens before the formation of a zygote. Most often, this arises when changes in a species environment or behavior make it so populations are no longer in the same place at the same time, and thus they lose the opportunity to mate with each other. Geographic isolation is the first type of prezygotic isolation happening here on the Lonely Islands, which means we need to pay our jailbird one last visit. Geographic isolation results from groups of organisms being separated by a physical barrier that prevents them from meeting up to mate. In the case of the jailbird, both her cage and the ocean prevent her from reaching others to reproduce. Now let's head back to the mainland and see what other forms of isolation are brewing. Looks like we're ready to explore temporal isolation. Temporal isolation occurs when groups of organisms no longer encounter each other to mate because they've become active at different times. This can be due to a change in daily activity, such as if one group becomes nocturnal to eat foods only available at night, or it can be due to a change in seasonal activity, such as if two groups no longer reach a breeding ground at the same time. This nocturnal bobo is temporally isolated from the qualians. Hey, sometimes a nap is just more important. I feel that. Moving on, we've got behavioral isolation, which leads two groups to stop mating because of mismatches in mating behavior. Just like these two, um, not lovebirds. Clearly tuxes aren't her thing. Sorry, dude. She's just not that into you. Next, ecological isolation occurs when two groups of organisms begin using different resources in their environment, and thus no longer encounter each other to mate. So you won't find this population of tree-nesting qualians mingling with these ground-dwelling bobos. Now, these first four types of isolation we introduced all occur when groups are unable to get together and mate. The final type of prezygotic isolation is a bit different. Mechanical isolation occurs when differences in reproductive anatomy make it impossible for fertilization to occur. In this case, groups are able to find each other and attempt to mate, but sperm and egg never meet to form a zygote. You can see that this qualian and this bobo finally meet up, but they've encountered the classic dilemma of a three-pronged plug and a two-pronged outlet. Looks like that sperm's not getting to the egg tank today. And you know, that seems like my cue to get off this island. Let's hop over to the east of Zygote Isle and see what's going on with postzygotic isolation. Sounds like we're finally gonna get some fertilization. As you may have guessed, postzygotic isolation occurs after individuals successfully mate and create a zygote. Specifically, postzygotic isolation prevents two organisms from generating successful offspring. 
Even though in the Lonely Islands, they're an ocean apart, pre- and post-psychotic isolation are not mutually exclusive. If two groups that typically experience pre-psychotic isolation do meet up, they could also experience post-psychotic isolation upon mating. A hybrid is the offspring of two individuals from different species. Because species usually have different numbers of chromosomes or other genetic incompatibilities, by definition, hybrids are unable to survive or reproduce, or both. This means that hybrids cannot pass on their genes, and so there's no gene flow between the parent species and reproductive isolation is maintained. The first type of post isolation is hybrid inviability, which occurs when a hybrid forms but is not able to survive due to genetic incompatibilities between the parents. Inviable zygotes often die before birth. However, sometimes they are born but die before reproducing. To represent hybrid inviability, this poor baby hybrid has been strangled by these abnormal chromosome vines. I'm not crying, you're crying. Now, some hybrids are healthy enough to survive, but are unable to reproduce, which is called hybrid sterility. When hybrids have parents with different chromosome numbers, the hybrid will have unpaired chromosomes in their genomes. Typically, these unpaired chromosomes interfere with lining up during meiosis, which prevents hybrids from producing functional gametes. To represent hybrid sterility, this disappointed couple of two hybrid birds is watching over their empty nest. Wow, these islands are just full of bad news. I'm ready to get out of here. But before we go, let's recap this journey of disappointment and despair. First, west of Zygote Isle, we saw that prezygotic isolation occurs when populations can't reproduce because they're not in the same place at the same time or anatomical differences prevent them from mating successfully. Then, as if those prezygotic misconnections weren't sad enough, we moved from tearjerker rom-com to full-on tragedy with postzygotic isolation. When two separate species are able to produce zygotes or offspring, called hybrids, they may face two sad fates. First, there's hybrid inviability, where hybrids die before reproducing. Alternatively, hybrids who do survive face hybrid sterility and are unable to generate functional gametes to reproduce. Well, I'm out of tissues, so I'll see you next time. <laughs>